do 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 Hello everybody. This video is sponsored by Triangle Space. Wait a minute, no it's not. This 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 video is not even monetized. What's my purpose for making this video? Well, it's not for money. <laughs> um yeah, the title of this video is How Dare You? Now, someone made a video about the Afghan girl just a few days ago, and uh, it's incredibly ridden with errors. And do you know what it means to uh, emit things in order to uh, support your own position? Like, if someone says something and like the really key important thing that completely contradicts the premise of your video is omitted, yeah, we call that a primary omission. It's actually called something else. On the Afghan girl, and interesting enough, you said in your video, and what really galls me the most is that someone sitting in their mansion, sipping their tea, which is fine, decides to, Steve McCurry, the photographer for National Geographic, I've always appreciated his work. I don't actually consider it to be my favorite work, but who gives a damn about that? Someone who is not actually a working photographer, which is fine, you know, sitting in their large house, which is also fine, talking about a guy who has been, you now this is what we say about Marines or soldiers, if you've never heard this before, dragging their pecker through the dirt. It means someone is actually down there. The guy, Steve McCurry, has been uh, robbed via AK-47 Kalashnikov while doing photography. He's been in war zones. He's had his life threatened on countless occasion, occasions. You know, God knows you might end up with, uh, I'm only assuming this, might end up with like skin cancer for having so much exposure, literally dragging his ass through the dirt, working as a real photographer. I mean, I'm not saying that the person that I'm referring to that made that video a few days ago, they are not a working photographer. Um, they cannot compare to Steve uh, McCurry. I can't compare to him either, obviously so. Nor am I stating that fact. It's, it's amazingly horrible what you've done. You've slandered the guy. You have slandered him. Um, you said in your video that you tried to get a hold of Steve McCurry. Well, it took me five hours to get a response back from Steve McCurry, a buddy of mine who I've known for quite a few years, got a hold of him very quickly. I'm not going to tell you what was being said. Apparently someone, the interested party, the photographer, is seeking legal counsel for defamation that you made in your video. And, uh, you know, the really important thing that you left out, which completely, you know, blows your video out of the water, is this nice little interview from 2017 uh, BBC, January 2017 BBC, where this is the very first part of it, she says, and uh, the key part is right after this, which you kind of left that part out. It says, before this, I was a villager and did not like the photo and the media. Yeah. Then she goes on to state, Now I'm very happy and has given me honor and made me popular amongst the people. And directly after that, the income from this photo has helped me a lot. Widows and orphans, now I am proud of it. Let me repeat that. Now I am proud of this photo. The income from this photo has helped a lot of widows and orphans. Here's another fact that was interestingly left out. Now, we call this an omission because this video is everywhere. It's a BBC video. The other thing that was left out is that she lives in a 3,000 square foot house, way bigger than mine, and she gets, I'm told, something over $700 a month, which in Afghanistan is a, it's a lot of money. And that's due to this one photograph. So, yeah. Something else that you said that was incorrect in your video, you said contradictory, that she was, uh, the Afghan girl was left alone while she was being photographed, but a few minutes later you said that the translator that was in the room at the time she was being photographed, there's a translator in the room, yeah. Um, 
Now, National Geographic, and I've been, I don't collect National Geographics anymore because now they've turned into like a political magazine. I hate to say it. Um, it's a coffee table book. National Geographic has never been a hardcore journalism publication, nor, if I recall, they've ever said that. I've seen basically every National Geographic since the dawn of time. I used to, I used to, I still do have hundreds of National Geographics in my back room back there. Hundreds, literally. They're like stacked five feet tall, really heavy stuff. National Geographic is if you took a blender of hard journalism, or just journalism, not hard journalism, and like coffee table book. You took a coffee table photo book and soft journalism and you put it into a blender. That's what National Geographic is. It is a coffee table magazine slash journalism. It's like, oh, isn't that neat? You know, back in the days before the internet, which was when National Geographic hit its heyday. People would want to learn about the world. Oh my God, this is what's going on in this part of the world. Look at these beautiful images. Um, there's no denying that Steve McCurry staged the girl. You know, who cares? If I saw that girl and I were, was him with the camera, with the Nikkor 105, I think it was used 105 millimeter F2.5, not that that matters at all. It's like, yeah. Move your head that way, pose the girl. Who cares? Nobody gives a damn. Photography is an art form. Don't give a damn. That has nothing to do with anything. That girl's not been exploited. This girl, she's now a woman, of course, says that she's proud of the photo. Um, you took, the worst part of all of this has nothing to do with the Afghan girl, which I'm interested that nobody seems to have mentioned this incredibly important point is that outside of the fact that the Afghan girl says that she's proud of the photograph right here in this BBC interview, she says she's proud of it. You took a photographer that has been busting his, his butt and dragging his ass through the dirt year after year, decade after decade, doing real photographic work, including getting his life threatened, you know, which is an established fact. Over and over again, Steve McCurry goes to really dangerous places and has been threatened at gunpoint. And one story was they robbed him of everything, but he had to beg to keep his camera. He's like, oh, you know, please steal everything, but please, God, don't take my camera. And they let him keep his camera. Yeah, because that's his tool of the trade, right? Great story. It's a true story. You took a guy like that, you know, while you're sitting in your large house sipping tea, and you decided to attack somebody like that. Yeah, that seems like a really smart move. You know, due to a lack of maybe topics to create videos about, and I, God knows I make way too many videos, right? I'll be the first to admit it. Due to like a lot, like, I don't know what to make a video about today. Um, um, and this is, of course, me only assuming something here. This is me completely speculating, right? Just tell me if you people think I'm completely off the mark here. I think I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this famous photographer that's been busting his ass out in the dirt and nitty gritty and war zones and stuff. I'm just going to, and I'm just going to take this, goods, this guy's good name and drag it through the dirt. That sounds like a good idea. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back here in my recliner. I'm going to sip a little tea. And yeah, I'm going to make a video. Yeah. I find it very interesting that you admitted at the part where this woman is proud of that photograph. That's in her own words. I forget. You weren't even there. I wasn't there when he took the photograph, and you weren't there when he took the photograph. Okay, girlfriend, you weren't there. Nor were you getting, you know, your life in danger in dangerous war zone areas like he was. Right? I don't care if he, at the time, which of course he didn't, I wouldn't care if he like gave the girl 20 bucks and like had her do a, a, a you know, like go back there, like change into something nicer. Due to that picture on the cover of National Geographic, that actually brought great attention to the plight of the people of Afghanistan. You know, and if at the time, while she was a teenager, you said you saw fear in her eyes? Don't give me that nonsense. It's like someone, I could see the fear in your eye. Eyeballs don't speak, you know, unless they're crying or something. It's like, it's like, are you upset? No, I was cutting an onion. Don't tell me about the fear you saw in her eyes. There is literally, I can't think of a single photograph that hasn't like touched more, 
touched over a billion people. At least half the planet, probably more than half the planet, has seen that photograph. You know, if I saw that girl at the same time Steve McCurry was there, I would have staged her, done with, like, here's 20 bucks, man, you're, you know, you're, this is incredible, I don't care if you got to have someone standing beside you, you know, I don't want to touch you or nothing, I just want to take a photograph of you showing the plight of your people, blah, blah. This guy's, this guy stuck his butt in the dirt in dangerous war zones, and you, like, drug his good name through the dirt? How dare you? I mean, honest to God, how dare you? In the name of drama, or, or clickbait, or creating views. This video is sponsored by Triangle Space. I, I'm sorry, I had to. I have to stop this video for a few minutes so I could do a sponsorship. But this video is sponsored by Triangle Space. If you go to Triangle Space right now, you'll get a 50% off coupon. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, 50% off Triangle Space if you go there right now. Because right now, if you used a code C L I C K W E A. S-E-L. Remember, that is 50% off code. C-L-I-C-K-W-E-A-S-E-L. You will get 50% off triangle space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was some dry humor. It was crazy humor. This video, by the way, is not monetized and I have no affiliate links. I'm not selling anything. I'm actually making this video from the premise that I'm affronted. Um... I would like to know how it is that you were unable, really key thing here, I would like to know how it is that you were unable, as you said, to not get a hold of Steve McCurry. I reached out to him on, uh, I'm not going to tell you how, but I heard back from him in about five hours. And my buddy, who's uh, kind of friends with the guy, um, it took him, I think, a day to hear back from Mr. McCurry, who apparently is seeking the advice of the business class, you know those guys that with law degrees, apparently he's seeking advice. Because, I don't know, if I were him, and I'm, I'm not in Steve McCurry's brain, but if I were him and I had drug my butt through war zones for decades, and then like some anonymous YouTuber, you know, sitting in his house, you know, looking out the, uh, past the, the crystal chandelier and the palatial lawns, decided to like, drag, uh, drag me through the dirt without cause, I would think, you know, I'm going to contact, uh, I'm going to contact some, uh, some, uh, legal advice. Yeah, I, I would do the same thing if, uh, and by the way, if Steve McCurry sees this video, I greatly appreciate your work. I always have. I'm nothing but a pissant on YouTube, a bald tattooed one. A fat one, too. There we go. But I greatly appreciate your work. I always have. And um, I'm sorry that uh, someone who has not even come within one, one one thousandth of a percent of doing what you've done and endangering your life to do the photo photography that you do has uh, decided to, uh, you know, drag your name through the dirt and muck. I'm so sorry. I mean, I have nothing to do with this, but I'm sorry for you that that happened to you. Uh, I guess the only thing you could say is welcome to the internet. You know? The interesting thing that you should realize, Steve McCurry or anybody else that's watching this, I gotta say one more thing, is the guy that looks like a sleaze ball that's covered in tattoos and a bald head, you know, I'm the guy that actually sticks up for you. The people that look nice and proper and, oh, hi, how are you doing? These are the most untrustworthy people on earth. They always have been and they always will be. <coughs> Fucking politicians. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I mean people that, you know, pretend to be superficially prim and proper and uh, ethical. And so, yeah, I don't trust people like that at all. Isn't it interesting how that works? Is that people that want to look really good on the outside are often, mm, yeah, rotten on the inside, you know. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. Doesn't always work that way. There are plenty of like really heavily tattooed, awful criminals and stuff like that. They're like, yeah, that guy's that guy looks, you know, yeah. And I don't know about that skull tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But to the other guy, shame on you for uh, dragging Steve McCurry's name through the dirt because he's actually a real photographer that has put his life on the line, and you're not even a million miles close to that. Not even a million miles. 
Did you hear me, damn it? <laughs>